Hi, my name is Shad and I'm your computer teacher today. So the subject is ACID, which is a database security term. So if you're in a class on databases, you're likely going to encounter these terms. Atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. What do they mean? And that's why you're watching this video, right? So the first one is uh, the idea of an atom. So atoms are supposedly indivisible things. You can smash a Rubik's cube, but not a cue ball. Well, we know that atoms actually are divisible, but when we talk about actions in a database, we want to have atomicity, which means if you do a series of things in a collection, you either do all of them or you do none of them. So here's an example. So let's say we want to write our code so that we have a series of items that are working like an atom. We would have a command to trigger our database to have auto commit turned off. Then we would begin our transaction and we would do a loop or a series of events. And so we would try to see if everything works fine. We would keep track to see if all actions were successful. If they all measure as successful, we run a commit. So your database actions then become one cohesive whole. Now, if there is a failure in any one of the series, then you have a fail and you would call a rollback. So let's say you're using Java as your programming language and you were looking for how to create these transactions. You would look at code samples that would have something along these lines. Notice here, we have the auto commit set to false. Then we do a bunch of items, which are updates and a bunch of, com a bunch of deletes maybe. And then at the end, you have a commit. So this here is going to tell us that all of the actions are going to be committed at the same time. Well, what happens if in any of these situations there is an error? Well, they put in a try and a catch section, and that catch section is going to include the rollback command. So this is Java. It might look different than the language that you're using, but the same concepts are going to apply. A commit, a try and a catch, a rollback. Those are all features of atomicity. The next letter in ACID is consistency. So consistency means that we're going to have prevention of corruption of data. Here's an example of some corruption that would occur with a table that has foreign keys. So on the left we have artists, on the right we have albums. Now you can see that the albums table has a foreign key so that each album is a relation to an artist. And so we can tell who these albums belong to. Now this is nice it works, it's consistent. However, what happens if we were to take an operation such as a delete? So Elvis is knocked out of the artist area. So what happens to our albums table? So Hound Dog is got a relation with uh, artist number four. And of course that breaks. So if we were to do an operation of a delete on a parent row such as Elvis, what would happen to the albums? What would happen to the children rows? So let's take a look at this example here. So I have a database that has albums and tracks. And you can see that there's a foreign key relation between them. So that each track belongs to an album. So an album has many tracks. So let's take a look at track here. I'm gonna double click it and open up the uh, options to look at all of the data rows. So the last one here is album ID. This is the foreign key. Now, if I go down to the tabs at the bottom, you can see there is a section called foreign keys. And over on the right, we have some uh, actions or non-actions, we could call them. So this says on update, and this one here says on delete. We have four choices for how we're going to handle a delete, let's say, let's say for example. So if an album were deleted, what would happen to all of the tracks that are associated with that album? Well, this answers the question, what we can do. We have four choices. We can say no action, which is the default, which means it literally is impossible to delete the album if tracks are present, because that would leave a track as an orphan, and we wouldn't want to do that, apparently. The other option is called uh, Cascade, which is the second most common option. And actually, I program this a lot with my students because it is maybe what people expect to happen. If I were to delete an album, I would automatically want to remove all the tracks that are associated with it. So that would be called Cascade. It's uh, very destructive, obviously. If you delete an album and, and lose all of your tracks, that might be a surprise to you. So you can see an option here called Set Null, 
which would put all of the uh, foreign key values to a null value. Um, that would kind of still leave them as an orphan. And the other one is restrict. And honestly, you'd have to look that up because I don't use that. I just use the two called cascade and no action as most of the needs that I have. So sorry for my ignorance, but you can tell me what restrict is in the comments if you know. So let's take a look at our uh, database in the PHP manager. So I have music, the database open. You can see that I have albums and I also have tracks. So each track has a parent. So you can see that this song called Help belongs to uh, album number five. And uh, The Night Before also belongs to five. And Ticket to Ride also belongs to five. So there is one album here that has at least three tracks. Let's go see what album five is. So I'm gonna click on album and it is called Help. So the name of the album Help is also got a track named Help in it. But anyway, there are at least three tracks associated with help. What happens if I try to perform the delete action? You know, of course it says, are you really sure you want to delete this? You're going to delete all the albums that have an ID of number five. Sure, let's get rid of it. And now we have a message that says, I can't do that, Dave. It says there is a foreign key constraint. So in English, that means I have tracks associated with me and I can't get rid of this album. You can fix this in two ways. One is you can go delete all the tracks, first of all, or the other option to get rid of that error is to go into here and switch this delete option to cascade. So I'm not gonna do that. I don't want to change my database that way, but if you wanted to get rid of that error and get rid of the tracks at the same time as the album, this would be your option. So the goal, of course, is to prevent orphans in a foreign relation on this table like we have here. The third item in our acronym is isolation. Let's see what that does. So isolation is trying to prevent multiple updates from occurring and prevent race conditions. Let's see what that looks like. So let's say we have two transactions that are running in parallel. They are on two different computers maybe. So transaction begins and then reads record A and then sometime it long, along its process it pauses. Transaction two comes in, reads letter A or record A and then writes to it. So it changes it, it updates it. And then transaction one finishes its job at a later time, writes and commits. Now, which one of these wins the war? Because they're both fighting over the same record A. Well, in this race condition, the last person that comes to the record gets to see its changes permanent. It's the last one that wins the race. So in a race condition, the process that finishes last may win because of writing data and overwriting the previous process. Or if you're in a different condition, a process that finished first might say it is the winner because it triggers an event that causes some changes in the database and that happens first. So a race condition doesn't necessarily mean that the first one done is the winner. So what's the solution? Well, let's say we have a database with a whole bunch of rows. We just simply put a lock on a row or a whole bunch of rows if there is the potential for two to conflict, two processes to write to the same record. And so a mutex or a lock on a data row is the solution. It slows the database down, of course, because you have exclusive access, but it prevents problems. And so isolation is to keep the data integrity as well. You've likely seen this in your operating system when it comes to managing folders. You're going to say, I can't delete that. There's somebody else using your folder. Or I can't shut down your computer because a file is open. You're going to have the same idea in a database that you might be familiar with when you're working with files in Windows or an Explorer. The last item up is called durability. So data is committed to long-term storage to prevent loss. So a database can reside on the hard drive or the disk and it can be put into memory as kind of a cache. And so we have an issue. What happens if the power is shut off? Well, what happens in your computer when you're halfway through a document in Word and the power is lost or your computer suddenly reboots? Well, Word is kind enough to you that it has a document recovery. It's constantly saving your document to the hard drive so that way if this, if this occurs, you have a recovery option. So the disadvantage, of course, for having a bunch of writes to the disk is that your computer slows down. Your database performance starts to suffer. But for durability reasons, it's worth it. Because can you imagine if the power goes off during a server's operation and half of the financial records of a company are in one state and half in the other and some are lost? Uh, it's a huge cost. And so let the database be more durable rather than fast. 
Now there is a workaround for that. You can lift a database from the hard drive and put it into the computer's memory, if you have enough memory, and so that you can have caching solutions that will account for this. So a popular database in memory is called Redis, and sometimes that's added on to a server to make the performance better. But the idea of durability is the main concern that we want to ensure. So when it comes to database security, the ACID principles apply where we have these four terms. If you'd like to program using databases, then I've got a whole bunch of tutorials right here, uh, one on C Sharp, another on Java, and you can learn how to make your own applications that work with databases. My name is Shad, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.